Hello and welcome to the Natural Healers Network TV show where we showcase natural healers in the South Bay and we discuss natural healing and the benefits. And we have a great show lined up for you today. We, our first guest is Lori Krein. She's an expressive arts... Expressive arts... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Help me, Lori. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> she has, well, let me say this. She has an art studio in Campbell, California where she teaches expressive arts. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a good way to put it. All right. Um, well, welcome, Lori. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Wonderful. So just let's start off by, can you explain what expressive arts means? Uh, I'll try, because it's kind of this wide open field. Um, expressive arts uh, can be many different types of art that uh, sometimes it's used in therapy and sometimes it's just for fun or a hobby or whatever, but it's a way for people to express themselves in ways other than talking. So... Um, it could be drama, you know, doing role play, that kind of thing, or just theater, improv, that kind of thing. It can be dance. Um, uh, and then in, in my case, uh, it could be music as well. That's another way to do expressive arts. Um, drawing, painting. In my case, it's uh, using collage as the expressive arts medium. So um, it's a way for people to just kind of share or get, get to the emotions that they might not be able to get, you know, when they're doing talk therapy, a certain part of your brain is being used to talk and to explain how you're feeling. Uh, expressive arts is, is a way to tap into another part of yourself and, and you might be able to get out what you're feeling uh, to the world because, and you just don't know what the words are. You can't find the words to explain it, but you're able to, to express it in a piece of artwork or a piece of dance or a, um, an improv or a theater or music. So that's what expressive arts is. Okay, well you mentioned therapy. I'm curious to know if you think this is considered art therapy? Okay, so um, most people have heard about art therapy and you, you know there are therapists who specialize in doing art therapy and that's usually when you know you go in and um, the, the uh, therapist guides you through some exercises where you might do drawing or play with uh, toys in, in ch children's case sometimes and that's very specific kind of therapy and they do analysis of sometimes if you do drawings like kids will do drawings and then they analyze what did the drawings mean you know they might draw the uh, parents very small and the children very big or there's different things that you analyze in the drawings and they mean something very specific that's art therapy and it's usually used when um, people are having deep issues and they're acting out and they need help so the difference um, between that and expressive arts therapy is, uh, or in the case what I do, it's not even therapy, but it is therapeutic. So there's a difference. So people come to my studio and they're just looking to express themselves. They want to learn how to do collage. They might do some painting. And so what happens in the process, it's kind of by accident. I call it accidental therapy because they are able to um, work through issues that, that uh, through the art without really doing it intentionally. So one of my first, um, this woman, woman came to my workshop uh, about three or four years ago when I first started, and she had just lost her husband. He was like 35, he got killed in a motorcycle accident. And she came in just, you know, obviously going through grief, and she just wanted to be around people and be in a creative environment. And she spent the next couple of months working on a couple pieces of art that ended up being um, a memory of her husband. And, and it was like just, I could see her going through her grief process. So mm. it was therapeutic. She didn't talk about it very much. She just did her thing. And at the end of those couple of months, she was a different person. Wow, what a yeah. beautiful experience for her. It was. And, and probably for you too, to be a it part was. of that. It was, yeah. And I didn't even know what was going on at the time. I didn't even know what expressive arts was. I didn't even know it existed. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, and I um, I started, you know, more, more people would come to my workshops, and this thing hap started happening over and over and over again and I was like what is going on here so somehow I came across the term expressive arts and I was like started reading on it uh, reading up on it learning more about it and I and I realized that that I had been doing something again by accident that other people are, are actually doing you know they're writing books about it and doing research on it so it was actually a real thing that I didn't even know was there and so um, so that's kind of how it how it got started and, and how it grew was just being able to provide a space and an environment that people felt safe um, and they were able to work through some issues. So it's 
it's been really wonderful. Okay. So I think you, you focus more on collage more than any other uh, types of art. Can you explain why? What, which, what resonates with collage for you? So, uh, so collage for me, I, I always was drawing when I was a kid, you know, pencils and doing collages, <laughs> cutting things out of magazines and putting them on a piece of paper and, and stuff like that. So I've always been kind of associated or connected with collage. And then when I got older, I took some art classes and I realized I really could not draw, I could not paint, it just it never came out right. So fast forward, uh, my kids were little about 10 years ago, I started, I decided I wanted to learn how to make paper in my backyard. I made a whole big stack of paper, didn't know what to do with it. I found a collage workshop, went to the class, learned how to apply the paper to a canvas, to vases, to whatever, do decoupage. And um, that's, uh, when, when I went through that process, I realized for me, I was like, oh my God, this is, I can do beautiful artwork with paper because the paper already has the color on it. And I don't know if I'm show an example. Okay. The paper already has the color on it. It already has a texture. So half of the work is done for me. The things that I don't know how to figure out about the color and the, all that, it's already done. So all I have to do is manipulate the paper in a way um, that makes it a piece of art. And it just took away some of the pressure of having something in your hand and, and drawing with it. I just tear or cut and glue. And I'll tell you, it just comes out. I don't even have to think about it. So it's very non-threatening and easy medium to use. And you've, you know, I have people come in my studio that have never done any artwork before, and especially men for some reason. I'll have men come in and, and they're kind of there with their wives. They'll drag them in there, you know, and they're kind of like, what am I doing here? And they'll start. I was like, just go, go to the paper, the paper drawer and find your favorite color. Just grab a handful of papers that you like. Don't think about it. Just grab them. Bring them to your table. And then I'm like, just start tearing and cutting them and gluing them on. And five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes go by, and they're totally engrossed in what they're doing. Um, and at the end of the day, they have a finished piece of artwork and, you know, it might not be anything wonderful, but they made it and they finished it and they always feel so good about it. And the experience itself, you know, not necessarily the finished product, the experience itself of doing it seems to really bring something out in people. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so you were talking about people who maybe don't, don't have any background in art or maybe feel like they can't draw or, or maybe inept in some way. And I'm wondering uh, if you can... Let's talk a little bit more about, you know, um, how can people get through that to maybe come see you or come, come work on this? Okay, so, um, well, my, I have a website, uh, and that uh, my website has information about workshops that I have and other mm -hmm. things. Um, so they just come to the studio and during my when I workshop so they can schedule a private session or whatever they want. It's all different ways. And it's just very non-threatening. And um, the beauty of it is, or part of the, part of the um, experience or part of the... A draw for people is because I have group classes, right? This is not a one-on-one -on -one experience. It can be if people want that, but most of the time it's a group experience. And that just the fact of being in a group with other people creating uh, adds another element of ease and community and connection with other people who are also tearing and cutting paper, and they share, you know, stories about themselves and and they share um, ideas about their artwork. So it becomes this really nice little uh, group activity. Mm -hmm. And then um, because they, people have bonded uh, during this time that they're creating together, they, they often continue the relationships outside of the class. So it's become a really nice little network for people in a support group in a way. Okay, so it becomes more than just, I'm just gonna sit in a room by myself or with you and do an art project. It's, it's a group experience where, we, where we're really you know, connecting with each other and having a great time together and, yes. and sharing a deep memory. Absolutely, yeah. yes, and, uh, and it, it just enhances the experience. I have lots of groups who come in. I have a, like ladies' night out, so the women will come because they don't want to go to a bar. You know, what are you going to do? So they come to the studio together and they work on projects. They can work on their own projects. They can work on a project that I give them. There's really uh, no limit. I don't have a lot of restrictions on what you do when you come to the studio. A lot of times it is just sort of an open studio environment. Um, if you want to work on something specific, I'll show you how. If you want to do your own thing, that's great. Um, I have families that come together. We do. Uh, I do teenagers that come, and teenagers are the, the best group to come and do this because they have so much to express and so much to get out. And so many times they just don't know what to do with that emotion or those hormones or whatever, and they don't want to talk to their parents. They don't even know what to say or what's going on. But they can do artwork, and that artwork is a way for them to get it out, get it out of their heads and onto a canvas or whatever. 
And um, it's just a po really powerful experience for teenagers. So I work, um, I have a lot of uh, teen groups coming in the summer uh, and doing like a teen art camp environment. So uh, we do a lot of collage during that. Great. Now, can you talk a little bit about some of the pieces you've brought? Maybe uh, explain some of, the, some of these? Oh, sure. Um, uh, these are three masks that I brought. So I'll hold up this one we kind of already looked at, the yellow one. And we've got a, a red one as well. And then I'll show this one and then I'll talk about them. Okay. And this one is... Uh, this one was done with magazines, so I sliced, I, I cut slices of magazines, and then I adhered it onto the canvas and the mask, and then I sanded it a little bit to make it a little rough, so it wasn't so shiny. Well, how are the masks made? How do you do that? So the masks I buy pre-made oh, okay. at the craft store. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the mask, it's about decorating the mask. I see. So that's really what, oops, that's what the focus is. Um, so uh, the reason I brought the masks was for me, I did a series of about 25 masks a couple of years ago uh, for a show. And during that process, it was transformational for me. I, I realized that um, the ma masks are very popular in my classes. A lot of people like to do them because they're, um, we see ourselves in the masks, right? Mm -hmm. So we tend to decorate the mask depending on, like, we make it, um, it's just that we have a deep connection to the mm -hmm. mask. It's like a reflection of ourselves. It's exactly, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. um, and also I realized like the mask is coming out of the canvas, it's three dimensional, but it's not, um, it, the paper's holding it back. So sometimes we hold ourselves back, we're trying to get out into the world, we're trying to show who we are as people, but the, but the paper like is holding us back. So there's always something that might be holding us back. And to discover what that is so that we can bring our full selves to, our, to the world is one of the important things and one of the important elements of doing this work. Um, so when I was doing it, it just, it was, I, it was a transformational process for me. So that's why I really like to encourage people to do at least one mask art project when they come in. Okay. Yeah. And is there anything, we have a couple minutes left, but I just want to know, is there anything you would really like people to know either about you or about art, anything else you'd like to share? Um, well, I would just like, I would like to encourage people to give it a try because until you actually try it, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people are nervous and afraid and just come in. I mean, it's just paper. It's just paper and glue and a paintbrush and it's just this non-threatening and it's easy. And, and being it together with other people doing it, we encourage each other and it's a very informal, encouraging environment. So I hope that people will give it a try. And, um, and again, they can find the information on my website about, you know, my location and, and all that. Okay. Yeah. Can you say your website again one yeah, more it's time? Yeah, it's com. And Krein, spell Krein? K-R-E-I-N. K-R-E-I-N. Yes, and um, I'll be uh, located in Campbell um, starting in March. So. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks for being here, Lori. Really appreciate you uh, being on the show. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs>